Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up snapshot replication to a remote NAS. Now, back in May, I did a joint live stream with Avi from Tech Me Out. Be sure to check out his channel and his content and subscribe. He does some great stuff. We were troubleshooting how to get snapshot replication to work over the internet. What we found out was that you have to port forward not only to the destination NAS, but to the source NAS as well. So you need two-way port forwarding. Now, that said, I recommend if you're going to do this over the internet, you do it with a site to site VPN. However, if that is not available to you, then port forwarding is going to be the only way to go because the quick connect does not work with snapshot replication. Now that said, I definitely want to thank Avi for giving me access to his NAS so I can create this video for you. And if this is of interest to you, then please stick around. So before we get started with the actual configuration, you might be asking, what is snapshot replication? Well, to make it simple and short, it uses the BTRFS file system on the Synology NAS, and it's used to create point in time copies of your shared folders that can be replicated to another Synology NAS. Now that's the simple version. If you want an extremely well explained detailed version, I suggest highly that you check out Frank over at WonderTech. He did a video on this, and like I said, it's an outstanding explanation, far better than I can do. So I'm going to leave a link to Frank's video up above. I highly suggest that you check it out. Okay, so I'm signed into my router. This is an Edge Router 6P. Now, your model may vary, so if you have a different manufacturer, the best thing to do if you don't know how to port forward on your model is just... Google the manufacturer followed by the words port forwarding and you should find the instructions that you need. Now that said, I'm going to add the following ports for port forwarding, 5001 for the DSM login and 5566 for the shared folder or LUN. In this case, it will be for the shared folder. We're going to get them added. But before we do that, I do want to remind you, like I said earlier in the video, this step is critical without this step the snapshot replication will not work over the internet. And it has to be done on both sides of the equation, both on the source side, which is what I'm doing here, and on the destination side, which Avi has already taken care of on his side of the equation. So let's go ahead and add the two rules. First one will be 5001. Forward to the IP address of the NAS. And we can just say snapshot here. We're going to add the second rule for the shared folder. Ports 5566. Again, forward to the IP address of the NAS. And again, we'll just say it's for snapshot. And we'll go ahead and we'll apply those rules. Okay, now that the task has been applied successfully, we can move on to configuring the replication task. Okay, so I'm signed into my Synology NAS. This model is the DS216 plus two. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is install snapshot replication if you don't already have it installed. You can go up to the package center and just come up to the search bar and start typing in snapshot. And then you can see here it returns these two options. Yours should say install if it's not already installed on your machine. Mine is, so that's why it does say open here. So that's the first thing. Then you're going to need to create a shared folder and you do that by coming over to the control panel and clicking on the shared folder icon. This way you have the shared folder ready to go that you want to replicate. In my case, I already have one created. It's here in the file station and it's this test sync folder right here. And you can see I have a couple of images that Avi sent me for his channel. So once that is all in place, we can go ahead and begin the replication task. Let's come up to my main menu. Let's click on snapshot replication. We're going to come down to replication in the left window pane. Make sure we're selected on shared folder, not LUN. In this case, we want to create a shared folder. So I'm going to click on create. 
Here it says, before you start, the wizard will guide you through the creation of a replication task for your shared folder and protect your data by replicating its snapshots between the source and the destination. And then it proceeds to give you some more information. We're going to go ahead and click on start. You have the option of doing local, which is both the source and the destination NAS are on the same server. In this case, we're going to select remote because I want to replicate over to Avi, who is roughly over 6,000 miles away from me geographically. So we're going to leave it set to remote and click on next. And here we're going to enter the information for the replication destination server. That would be Avi's NAS. So I'm going to go ahead and put in his information. He created a username and a password for me on that device. So I'm entering that now. Next, I'm going to click on use encrypted connection, then click on advanced settings. Under the destination server tab, you can see here it already pulled his DDNS, but I do have to change his DSM login port to 8001. We can leave the shared folder at 5566. Before I click OK, I'm going to come up to the source server and I'm going to enter the information for my NAS here. Now, if I let it auto detect, it's going to find the internal address of my NAS, but here it has to be the public IP. And I could leave my DSM login at 5001 and the shared folder port at 5566. Let's go ahead and click on OK. Now that we have everything entered in place, hopefully, we'll be able to proceed to the next step. Okay, it looks like we successfully authenticated to the destination. So you can see here the host name, the volume, and the available capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on next. And now we're going to select the data we'd like to replicate. So it's this test sync folder here that contained the two images and we'll go ahead and we'll click on next. So for the initial replication, we're going to leave it set to send the initial copy over the network and sync immediately after the creation of the replication task. And that's totally up to you if you want this option enabled, but I'm going to leave it set. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on next. So on this screen, it's asking us to set a replication schedule. And like any other Synology backup task, whether it be hyper backup, you can set a backup schedule. So I'm going to set it to just to make it a little different. I'm going to set it to Monday through Friday. And then I'm going to have it first run at 3 a.m. And the rest looks fine. We'll go ahead and we will say next. And again, the retention policy, enable a retention policy to keep only the snapshots you want and free up storage. Without a retention policy, all snapshots will be saved in the system. So I'm gonna say enable retention policy, and I'm going to set the number of latest snapshots to keep at 14. And this is a personal preference. You can set it to whatever works for you. You can see down here in blue, it says a share folder can have up to a total of 256 snapshots in its snapshot and replication task. So we're going to go ahead now. We're going to say next under advanced settings, replicate scheduled local snapshots, local snapshots taken by snapshot schedules will also be transferred to the partner server. This will only affect snapshots taken after the option is enabled. Note: enabling this option may increase the time needed for replication. All right, we're gonna leave everything on this page as is, as default, and click on next. Now it's just confirming our settings. And then it says here, to ensure a successful replication, the system will apply a retention rule to your local snapshots. To modify the rule, go to snapshots, settings, and retention. We're gonna go ahead and click on done. Okay, so that did take a little bit. We're getting a successful message here. So 
So we're gonna go ahead and acknowledge that. And then here we could see that it says test sync. And you can see here that it's queuing, it's at 40%. Last successful run. So it appears to still be working, even though we did get a successful message. And the next runtime will be in 16 hours. So we're just gonna wait this out and, and hopefully this will continue and finish up successfully. Okay, so you see here now we have a successful completed task. It says test sync was a success. It replicated to the destination NAS in this folder. Here's the size. It's going to run again in 16 hours and it was successful a minute ago and the number of destinations one. And if we come up to info, we could see here another success message. It's showing the source NAS and the destination NAS, pending replication upcoming in 16 hours. Let's go up to statistics. Here it is showing us the transfer rate. And let's just take a look at topology and you can see the topology here. Thank you very much, Tony. Hey guys, this is Avi from Take Me Out. And Tony showed you the entire process and as always he did it beautifully, everything was very well explained and demonstrated. But Tony asked me to show you how it looks like, the end result looks like on the destination device. And when Tony asks you, ask you to do something, you just go ahead and do it. So this is actually the destination Synology NAS server. In fact, it's a virtual DSM device, but it doesn't really matter. And so the first thing that I would like to go ahead and show you is that during the process, the replication process, a shared folder is automatically created on the destination server. So if we go into control panel and shared folders, you will see that this is the replicated folder and it's created automatically as a read only, by the way. If you want the two sides to be read and write, you will have to use Synology Drive shared folder sync. But this is the end result. The shared folder is created in read only. And if I launch snapshot replication and go to the replication tab right here, do not be alarmed that it says the replication, the relationship is broken. This happened, happened be, just because on both sides, the folder, uh, sorry, the port forwarding rules have been disabled. So the destination and source devices are no longer able to talk to each other, but otherwise this will be in a green uh, successful state but the information is already there so you can see uh, what's the replicated what the, what the replicated folder is uh, you get some information as to the topology and statistics by the way let me jump over to one of my remote Synology NES devices that I replicate to so as you can see this is a, a relationship where it says the replication is successful. There is a communication between the destination and source and I can scroll through the info and see the topology and the statistics of the rep replication and I can even see what, uh, the, what is the source server, what is the destination server, what is the schedule or what is the frequency of uh, a replication. So all the information is already here and this is what it looks like on the destination server. By the way, I can even go one step further and verify if I'll open up file station. I can browse to the shared or the replicated folder and let's see what data Tony has replicated over to me. Hey, look, it's my logo. Uh, great, uh, what a great data to replicate over to my uh, virtual DSM device. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you guys for watching. I'm signing out. So there you go, we have snapshot replication working now. It's really not that hard, it's pretty simple actually. Once you figure out that you have to port forward on both sides of the equation, I'd like to thank Avi for making this possible by giving me access to his NAS and also for sending me that short clip of showing the successful task on his Synology NAS. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I have posted here up above 
please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they certainly do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.